this afternoon it's a bit blowy and overcast but we've come here to Murawai which is at the northern end of the Waitakere Ranges west of Auckland and here we've come to look at the internationally famous Murawai pillow lavas. So when the molten lava of the of the lava flow slowly cools and solidifies into the solid rock it contracts and in contracting these joints are formed forming these columns with joints in between them. These are called cooling columns and this is a cliff, a sea cliff that's been eroded across it. So we're seeing a section cut right through that lava flow where we can see the angles of these different cooling columns within it. Now the cooling occurs from the outside in, from the sea floor up into the flow and from the sea itself down into the flow. And as it cools progressively, those cracks form perpendicular to those cooling surfaces. So in the middle, we get those columns that are vertical and coming in from the bottom, meeting the columns that are coming in from different angles. And as we move further over to the right here, we can see just a mass of joints. And this is seeing those columns end on. Those columns are actually heading back into the cliff itself. So the cooling surface on the outside of this flow was in behind this cliff here. And these are these cooling joints that were formed as, uh, as this lava here cooled and solidified. Here we've moved back from the base of the cliff a little bit. As we move across this cliff we come to another structure and we see that we're actually me meeting the wall of a much larger cooled river of lava. So this lava river is about 100 meters across and 30 meters thick. We have much smaller tubes of lava one to three meters across called pillow lava lobes and these fingers very quickly cooled on the outside to form a glassy skin. And uh, because they've been weathering up here in the cliff for many thousands of years, that just weathered to a, a light orange clay, which now just nicely outlines the shape of each of those pillow lava fingers that we're looking at. From this viewpoint, we can see the car park where we've been with the quarry face cliffs behind uh, that we were talking about. And now from this point, we're going to take the track down and walk along the beach and look up at the cliffs to see the continuation of these lava flows uh, in those high cliffs above us. And we look up at the cliff up here and we can see that those rivers of lava flow that we saw before are only part of a much wider, 400 meter wide lava flow. And those rivers were in fact internal feeder tubes or rivers of lava within a much larger pillow lava unit. If you look up close at this feature you can see its cooling joints are perpendicular at the bottom and then radiate right round perpendicular to the cooling surface above it. So this could be called one of the largest pillows in the world. It's at least 20 meters high and maybe 30 meters across here. Well let's move on and let's see what else we can see. So here we are at the south end of the beach. We've walked all this way if I look up at the cliff, I can see that same amazing lava flow, pillow lava flow here, still above us. And I can see the base of the pillow lava halfway up the cliff there. And below that base of the lava flow, we now see these bedded sediments, these layers of sedimentary rock here that were deposited on the floor of the sea prior to the eruption of this pillow lava flow that we've been looking at. And looking at these muds and sandstones here that we've got, there are small microscopic fossils in here that have been studied in detail that tell us that these sediments were laid down on the floor of the deep sea at depths of about 1,000 to 2,000 meters of water at the time they were deposited. And that was a time about 17 million years ago that these were laid down and then the lava flow flowed across on top of them. Each one of these layers that you see here was once the bed of the sea. More sediments built up and so the seafloor is gradually getting higher and higher as those sediments grew. Now if I was standing here 17 million years ago, it would be nearly two kilometers to the sea surface up there and I would slowly walk up the slope here and I'd be walking up the slopes of the giant Waitakere volcano which was active and erupting offshore here and was the largest stratovolcano ever to erupt in New Zealand. And 17 million years ago, a finger or conduit of lava came out in this direction, broke through the sea floor, and this lava flow that we're seeing here then started flowing out and down the slopes in this vicinity.
So another 400 metres further south, if we scramble up from the beach here, we can actually touch one of these lovely pillow lava flows here. Now, when you typically see a pillow lava, we see a circle like this, with its radiating cooling joints through here. But what we don't often recognise is that these are cross sections across a finger of lava. So if we look just above, we can actually see that. We can see some of this irregular finger of lava being cut by the cliff erosion and you can see the actual shape of some of these finger-like lobes branching off each other and produced in this way on the sea floor. So you can see that these pillows are standing out quite nicely. That's because the soft sandy sediment in between them has mostly been eroded away. We can see some of that sediment in between these different pillow lava lobes and it's eroding back into the cliff and leaving the harder pillows standing out in this 3D effect. Well, we've come to the end of our walk here and it's at high tide level we just look up into the cliff and we've got some wonderful examples of the last part of this pillow lava flow. Unlike many other pillow lava flows around the world where the pillows are only 30 to 50 centimetres diameter, here we can see that there are a variety of diameters ranging from 30 right up to 2 to 3 metres across. So I do recommend that if you're in Auckland, come and see Murawai's internationally famous and huge pillow lava flows.